up is Steve from the old Yorkshire Geek and a bit of Star Trek, not news, uh, a Star Trek article to read today. This is from Screen Rant and it's about Star Trek debunks for hilarious conspiracy theories but others actually happened. Uh, this is a, from the uh, latest Star Trek Lower Decks episode um, called Caves uh, which didn't get very good reviews except from me and my mate Wind Grace. Um, he gave it a good review as well but a lot of the other reviews well, we're quite scathing in it, but uh, I actually loved it. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I thought it was a great episode. Anyway, so let's have a look at this uh, this article. But before we start, don't forget, see up there, look, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed already. I'm also on Rumble, and uh, my live streams are on Twitch, and I'm also on Spotify, and Amazon Music Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. You can also find me on Facebook, X, and Instagram. Links are in the description, as are links for other things as well. Right, so off we go. Let's get on with this article. Uh, where have I put it? There it is. <laughs> right, Star Trek debunked for hilarious conspiracy theories, but others actually happened. Lieutenant Brad Boimler, Lieutenant JG, uh, junior grade, Brad Boimler debunks a bunch of insane conspiracy theories in Star Trek Lower Decks. Meanwhile, Starfleet has endured a few real conspiracies. Right, and there we see the holographic Doctor. From Voyager, there's Q in his captain's uniform. He always, he always appeared as a captain, didn't he? Why don't he appear as an admiral? You'd think he would, wouldn't he? Then he'd outrank Picard, wouldn't he? But never mind. And there's Captain Picard. Uh, probably from, I don't know, Nemesis. Is that Nemesis here, Picard? Or is it um, um, First Contact? I don't know. Anyway, right, off we go. So, Lieutenant Brad Bond, by the way, I've noticed I've got my Starfleet cap on today for a change. So I'll, uh, I'll give the old uh, old Yorkshire geek a cap a breather. Um, maybe. I just thought I'd show you. I don't I usually saw the back of it, do I? And it's got that old Yorkshire geek on the back. <laughs> it's a one of a kind. Right, Lieutenant Brad Boimler, Jack Quaid, debunks a series of hilarious and insane conspiracy theories in Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 8, Caves. The history of Starfleet is filled with encounters with the unexpected and the bizarre that sometimes leave behind questions that can't be answered. As of Star Trek Lower Decks' late 24th century, um, I can't remember exactly what, is it something like 2385 or something like that? I can't actually remember when it's something like that, isn't it? Uh, a little bit after, you know, the uh, next generation era of Voyager and Deep Space Now, a little bit after that, into about, I don't know, uh, six or seven years after, into ish. Right, where were we? Uh, Some sounds leaves behind her uh, blood. Da, da. Starfleet officers have met cosmic beings beyond, beyond human comprehension and fought wars for the fate of the United Federation of Planets itself. It makes sense that a subculture of conspiracy theorists or truthers has sprung up. Starfleet officers from ensigns to starship captains keep logs recording their activities and service. Starship and officers' logs are meant to be a document about the ever-expanding history of Starfleet, but it's also not surprising that many Starfleet officers sometimes leave out key details of their adventures, either because they can't explain something or to purposely keep the truth out of their logs and from Starfleet Command's knowledge. One prime example is Captain Benjamin Sisko, Avery Brooks, deleting his entire personal log, in which he confessed he tricked the Romulans into entering the Dominion War on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, uh, that's beyond um, in the pale moonlight, isn't it, that episode? Uh, Cisco, the Bajoran emissary who ascended to become one with the Prophets at the end of DS9. I wonder if they're related to the Stargate um, ancients. <laughs> uh, crossover time. Uh, with the profits at the end of DS9 is, not surprisingly, a figure that truth has maintained conspiracy theories about. Uh, by the way, apologies for the adverts that are going to pop up here, because it's one of these sites where I've got, I've got to disable me ad blocking thing. Anyway, Lower Decks, Boimler debunks four hilarious and insane Star Trek conspiracy theories, and there he is. Obviously, it's an animated series, in case you didn't know. But they did appear... Boimler and Mariner did appear in live action in uh, last season's um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, uh, which were a fun episode. Uh, in Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 8 Caves, Lieutenant Brad Boimler recounted the frustrating ordeal of when he was trapped in the cave with Lieutenant Steve Levy, Fred Tataschiori. Is that how you pronounce that? He voices one of the other characters, doesn't he? 
But I don't know which one. I can't remember. Is it Rutherford? Must be. Must be Rutherford. Um, Levy uh, infuriated Boimler with his beliefs. And Bradward, Bradward Boimler, put him, Steve, in his place by firing back truth bombs at Steve. Lots of Steves in that uh, sentence there, wasn't there? Which is not a bad thing. <laughs> Wolf three, quote, Wolf 359 was a tragedy. Q exists. Picard isn't some hologram. And Voyager's EMH he is. Levy is an infamous conspiracy theorist, which Lieutenant Beckett Mariner, Tony Newsom, learned when she went on a date with Steve in Star Trek Lower Deck Season 1. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, I'll take the word for it. I've no memory anyway. I'm sure I'm going see now. <laughs> anyway, that's when Mariner found out Levy spreads the misinformation that Wolf 359 was an inside job. Don't get me started. Not on Wolf 359. And changelings aren't real. The Dominion War didn't happen. Uh, looking at those conspiracy theories, uh, pur uh, Levy purports, it's hilarious how backward they are. Thousands died at the Battle of Wolf 359. I think it was 11,000, I think, wasn't it? Um, Battle of Bull... What did I say then? I don't know. Battle of Wolf 36... 369? What's it talking about? It's not 369, is it? It's 359. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 369 there. It's a typo. Uh, thousands died at the Battle of Wolf 359 when the Borg mounted an attack on Earth in Star Trek The Next Generation. The best of both worlds. But Levy thinks it was an inside job by Starfleet. Millions more died in Star Trek Deep Space Nine's Dominion War. I mean, that could be... Not an inside job, but it could be that Starfleet knew more about the Borg than they were letting on. Because, uh, technically, they've known about the Borg since the days of uh, Jonathan Archer, since the earliest days of Starfleet, haven't they, when they found the remains of the Borg Sphere in the e Enterprise episode uh, Regeneration. So it could be argued that they already knew about the Borg. And also, you've got the case of the Hansen family, who, while technically not being in Starfleet, uh, maybe the Federation and, um, and, and Starfleet maybe knew that they were going to look for the Borg and let them go, and they ended up in their fate, obviously famously assimilated by the Borg. Annika Hansen became Seven of Nine. Anyway, uh, where were we? Uh, millions more died in Star Trek Deep Space Nine's Dominion War, which Levy thinks didn't happen. Uh, and that changelings are imaginary. There is certainly proof that Q, John Delancey, is real. After multiple encounters in the next generation, Deep Space Nine, he appeared once in Deep Space Nine, and Cisco punched him and never appeared again. So obviously that punch worked. And Star Trek Voyager. Uh, maybe Picard should have punched him. <laughs> then we wouldn't have had to bother with um, Q. Uh, after that. Anyway, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Patrick Stewart, somehow being a hologram while Voyager's EMH, uh, uh, Robert Picard, uh, EMH Doctor, Robert Picard, isn't. Doesn't even make sense. In Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3, Mariner and Boimler encountered truthers who wanted to hear the truth about what happened to Cisco, and they didn't accept that the emissary is working hard in the Celestial Temple, in Mariner's words. I mean, that could be, you know, a reasonable assumption, couldn't it? Given, you know, Starfleet's not into, you know, mystical and religious things. Uh, you know, we, we think is 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 gone. Uh, is is travelled to another dimension, another plane of existence, which they have seen in Star Trek. You know, uh, the motion picture, for instance, when um, Will Decker and uh, Ilya, tra you know, evolve to another dimension, don't they? Vija and all that. But, uh, and it's happened, you know, before uh, the episode Transfigurations. Uh, in, D in uh, TNG. But anyway, Starfleet has faced several actual conspiracies throughout Star Trek history. One of the most infamous conspiracies of the 23rd century was in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, when bad actors in Starfleet, the Klingon Empire and the Romulan Star Empire enacted a plot. I mean bad actors, um, as in not in bad actors in the film. Uh, bad actors is a, a term that means people up to no good. Uh, enacted a plot to assassinate Klingon Chancellor Gork on David Warner, the late great David Warner, and frame Captain James T. Kirk, William Shatner, in order to prevent peace between the Klingons and the Federation. Uh, if you remember, the Klingon moon Praxis exploded and um, sent the Klingon Empire into disarray, and that's what brought about the, the peace talks. 
Uh, Starfleet Admirals were replaced by parasitic bug-like aliens in the Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1 episode literally titled Conspiracy, although that storyline was immediately dropped and wasn't referenced again. Although I think it was in comics and stuff like that, I think. And maybe even um, Star Trek Online, but I'm not sure because not, I've not played that very much. But that was, a, you know, a good episode. It's a pity they never got mentioned again, uh, those uh, bug aliens. And same with the um, the aliens from the episode Schisms, uh, which I like that, that lived in a subspace realm. That was a creepy episode, because it was like an alien abduction sort of episode. Anyway, but I think they got mentioned again, I think in the comics, or maybe even Star Trek Online. A lot of stuff gets mentioned in Star Trek Online, but I don't know, because I don't, I don't play it. So I have played it, but I don't play it regularly. I've not got very far into it, so I don't know. I'm waffling. Hey, a conspiracy that nearly destroyed the Federation was the plot of Star Trek Picard Season 3. The Borg Queen, Alice Krieg, joins for, joined forces with Brogue. It was Alice, Alice Krieg's voice, and another actress portrayed her in the flesh. Uh, joined forces with Brogue changelings led by Vadik Amanda Plummer to secretly enable the assimilation of every Starfleet officer under the age of 25 using the organic Borg DNA from Jean Luc Picard's stolen corpse. The Borg nearly. Picard season three, you know, were good and enjoyable, but you know, the story left a lot, to, a lot of plot holes, really, left a lot to be desired. To be completely honest, anyway, but it was it was the best season of uh, Picard by a long way. The Borg nearly succeeded in their plan to bring down the Federation were it not for the heroics of the USS Enterprise D and the USS Titan A's crews. The Titan A, which still exists in my head canon. It's not the Enterprise G anymore. It's still the Titan A. But if Star Trek Lower Decks' Steve Levy uh, survives into the early 25th century, he would probably believe all the the wrong things about Star Trek Picard's conspiracy theory. Oh, that's it. So there we go. There we go. So yes, there have been conspiracies, and um, I don't know. This is about. Um, hang on, where were we? Where, 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 where is it now? There we go. Wolf three five nine was a tragic. Oh, this is what Boimler said to him uh, that he thought Wolf three five nine was an inside job, and as I said, it could be argued that Starfleet did have some prior knowledge of the Borg, um, or if not um, Starfleet, maybe Section thirty one had some prior knowledge of the Borg. But, um, you know, that's open to debate. Um, the Dominion War not happening is a bit of a weird one, isn't it, for him to say that? Um, I don't know where that one's come from, because obviously the inside job is a reference to 9 11, isn't it? There's the people that said 9 11 is what an inside job, and um, I think there's a lot more to it. You know, I, I used to be a, a big conspiracy theorist about 9 11, and I kind of still am, to be honest. I think there are a lot going on there that we'll never know about and um, I don't know about it being an inside job but it could have been how, how do I put it <laughs> without digging a hole for myself and getting run off YouTube um, maybe allowed to happen uh, but I won't go I won't go any further um, but this uh, Dominion War not happening I'm trying to think where they get the, the inspiration for that from because uh, there, there, there has been in conspiracy th- Theories, the arguments that Vietnam were a contrived war, uh, but it still did happen, and thousands did die in it. I think the hundreds of thousands did die in it, uh, but it still did happen. But it, people, some people say it were contrived. The um, um, oh, I forgot to call it now. The, the 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 incident that brought in America uh, into the Vietnam War, Tol- Tonkin, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Apparently never happened. <laughs> it would never. It would. That's it. Were a contrived incident, apparently. Um, so is it a reference to that? I don't know. The changelings are imaginary. Is that a reference to Al Qaeda? You know that um, these amorphous groups that uh, you know are the new enemy. We don't have enemy states anymore. Although they, they try the best, don't they? Uh, to make states into enemies, uh, but you've got these groups like Al Qaeda and uh, essentially terrorist groups uh, running around doing bad things. So is it a reference to that? And and obviously with Al Qaeda, the the conspiracy theory behind that is that they were created by the CIA during the Afghanistan war 
uh, or at least financed and, and trained and you know given weapons and stuff by the CIA and I think that's there is some truth in that uh, but anyway and um, what else what else what else what were the other ones um, Q doesn't exist uh, well does he exist this, this is the question um, what is existence when it comes to the Q because maybe they both exist and don't exist at the same time it's Q in it it's the Q continuum it's a, a funny a funny place uh, Jean-Luc Picard uh, being a hologram, um, that said, that could be, but I don't know, that's that's a funny one, isn't it? Because he didn't become a, an android, like a, a, a golem, until the early 25th century. So why in the late 24th century would Steve Levy be saying um, Picard were a hologram? Don't know, don't know. Or maybe they thought he were killed in uh, Star Trek Nemesis at the end when the, um, whatchamacallit, the scimitar exploded, killing um, Data. Um, maybe that's where it come from. Maybe the, the stories that Picard were killed in that as that explosion as well. They just created a hologram <laughs> to cover for him. It doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. And the uh, EM EMH Doctor isn't a hologram, but that's, we know this because there's other EMHs, isn't there? We saw another... Robert Picard or EMH in uh, Star Trek First Contact. So, so why are they saying he's not a hologram? I don't know. Are they saying he's a real person or are they saying he's an android? I've no idea. I've no idea. But anyway, so there we go. So that's a, a fun little article about conspiracy theories. Don't get me started on conspiracy theories. But uh, like I said, they did, they did happen in uh, in Star Trek. And of course, there's the episode, as it says, the episode conspiracy itself with the bug aliens. Where are we? Where is it? Uh, where are there we go. The parasitic bug-like aliens in the episode conspiracy, which were, a good, which were in season one. They always say season one didn't have any good episodes. But it did. It had some really good episodes. Uh, and that one famously edited, isn't it, for regular TV, because it is quite gruesome at the end when they destroy the the host, uh, which is uh, Commander... Oh, I forgot his name now. It's him that wanted... Um, um, no, he was an, an adjutant, wasn't he, for like, uh, one of the admirals. Um, I forgot his name now. Wind Grace, I'll know. <laughs> but um, the, to destroy him with the host, basically the, the mother, sort of like queen sort of thing, a uh, host for the queen bug, wasn't he? And they destroyed him with the phasers and basically disintegrated him. It was quite gruesome. It was quite gruesome. Blew his head off and everything. It was horrible. Uh, and that gets that's famously you know edited for uh, regular TV. Uh, but that was a good episode, and it had, um, um, you know, uh, like I said, other captains coming across this conspiracy uh, that things weren't going, you know, things were going awry in Starfleet. But it was a good one that. Uh, and obviously Star Trek VI, uh, which you know a, that were a definite conspiracy um, to to stop the peace talks. What else? Um, I'm trying to think of others that aren't mentioned here that we could think about um, conspiracies. I mean, it could be argued that Admiral Satie in the episode The Drumhead were trying to start conspiracies or conspiracy theories with a Drumhead trial. But uh, that didn't work out for her, did it? Because she didn't uh, count on uh, Captain Picard quoting her dad back at her <laughs> and uh, setting her off. Oh dear. I brought down bigger men than you, Picard. So there you go. Right, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Just a, a fun little article from Screen Ramp. Links in the description. If you want to have a read of that. Right, so we'll leave it there. So let me get rid of it. So, thanks for watching, wherever you are. Look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.